Greetings, and welcome to Abner Gamer. I'm your host, Abner007. If you love games, if you love comics, you love anime, then this is definitely the channel for you. I'm an avid collector of both DC and Marvel and other various comics with over at least 10,000 comics collected over the years and have watched shameless amounts of anime content. Today, we're gonna to focus on Marvel Avengers. This is a game that came up to a rocky start, but it's still very dear to me. And they're offering a game as service type of model, so it has limitless potential. The ceiling in this game is endless. Right now, we're gonna focus on character builds. A lot of people are playing this game. A lot of people are enjoying this game. Some are annoyed by bugs and various other things. But one thing is true. Your build will define you. And what we're gonna show you is how to make a comic book build and make it viable. Not just that, I would suggest that comic book builds are the strongest builds in the game for several reasons. So without further ado, let's get into this. Our first character up will be the Invincible Iron Man. Now this build is what I like to call my Invincible Iron Man build. There are tons of builds out all out in the land of YouTube and they're all viable to their extent and I know most people like to build a glass cannon type of Iron Man. I differ on that. I believe he's Invincible Iron Man so he should be invincible to a degree at least. So first and foremost let's look at our gear. Some of this gear is gotten straight from the hive. That, that after patch 1.11 we now can get exotic gear. So the Centurion's Mark 15 Doomfist are a part of that. So the plating of the storm is the other piece of exotic gear I have here. And this one was from the Tachyon Rips. The other parts are merely just gear that I've picked up over time. Right here, we obviously have the Centurion 15 Doomfist. You see light combo finishes, burst trigger shock damage, signature attacks deal shock damage, dispersing electrical energy every hit and it gives you 10 points intrinsic energy. The important part here are the stats. It's got almost 50 might and 46 proficiency. Next, we have Cosmic Gear, which were opened up by the Tachyon Rips. Precision, proficiency, and valor. Now, the repulsor attacks will deal cosmic damage, and the cosmic damage is far superior, in my humble opinion, than gamma. It's not a damage over time thing, it's just a straight burst damage, and this one actually heals you. The cool part about this piece that I have is that as a 44% chance of hitting an enemy with the ranged critical attack gives you a heroic charge burst for all heroics. And there's a 47% chance defeating an enemy with the ranged critical attack grants an invulnerability buff. That he's invulnerable, there's your invincibility right there. Now the plating of the storm, there's another key piece, there's another anchor piece here, proficiency and resolve. Now this is the only piece that I use that has any resolve on it now. I was using a little more resolve, but it's down to 61, and I'll show you why. So you get an increased amount of willpower recovered from attacking with cosmic affected enemies by 30%. So the heal that you receive from attacking people who are affected by the cosmic status effect is increased by 30%. It increases the amount of shock damage dealt with any attack by 20%. So this is going right in conjunction, hand in hand with the Doom Fist, with the signature attacks and the light attacks, or light combo finishes, I should say. Now, you have a 25% chance when you perfectly evade an income attack to activate a Tachyon Surge. Surge increases all status damage by 50% while active. This will further boost the electrical damage and cosmic damage you're doing with anything. Finally, we have our Apex Blix Reactor, Might, Precision, and Resilience. This gives you a 16% charge for your assault, uh, heroic assault ability. It gives you a 19% increased damage from signature attacks. Again, working in synergy or synchronicity with the Doom Fist. And also is a 30.2% chance of activating a, a heroic assault will give you a willpower burst. So that's even more health. Now, we go over to our artifacts. I go with the straight resilience, resilience. Give me another assault, another 19%. And I go with resilience precision. Now, this makes him completely resilient. He's over 200 points resilience. And this is important for the build. So our major artifact is just Valor and Might from the Tacticon. Now I use this simply because they increase damage from all status attacks, right? So now we're gonna go into our actual stats and look at this. So we got Might 92, Precision 139, Proficiency 149, Valor 52, that 61 Resolve from our, our defensive piece, and 206 Resilience. That's 41% basically armor. 
And if you look at the bottom here, there's 37% assault heroic charge. I live off the Unibeam. Unibeam is a staple of his of this build. Now, I have more crit than I do have precision. That's because, as you see, this is a very crit heavy build. So when we use this, we're gonna key up a, a war zone here and we'll do something that everybody's into like the uh, tachyon rips. You'll see the benefit of this build. And this works like, if it works here, it obviously works in anything. So we're gonna do the tachyon rift breakout, which is the solo rift, the only one you can do solo and the only one you can actually adjust the difficulty for. Sure set it on challenge there. four. We've never seen I brought Kamala, Hulk, and Thor. Kamala for the hills, Hulk for his tankiness, and Thor for his tankiness and destructive prowess. The key thing here in this build is that you're going to be trying to work the synergy, the hot and cold, or the positive and negative from the status effects. So I'm using cosmic and electric. Now they both play off each other. The cosmic will be considered the positive and the electric will be considered the negative. So, and it goes vice versa. So you can hit somebody with cosmics and your repulsors. This is a total repulsor build, by the way. I know people use, you know, missiles and I respect that. And that missiles are great, but this is a particularly like I said, a comic book build. You can tell I'm using the standard Mark III Armor Man, Iron Man armor. So this is that homage to that character. Now, you can electrify or shock someone and then hit them with the repulsors, or you can cause cosmic damage and hit them with that status effect and then hit them with your signature attacks or your light combo finishers. Also, we also have our, our, our um, support ability, right? That also provides an electric attack. Furthermore, when you go into your stats, we're going to our skills here and go into our mastery. I go all in, as you see, go into utility, boom. When I put out my, my shield, my, uh, uh, my evasive maneuver, my, my dodge, I'm causing shock damage as well. It's my energy pulse. And as you can see, these are all the, the masteries I've gone with. Nothing major here. Most people are probably already using these. I use increased damage for all attacks while overcharged. That's critical. I use overcharge duration, so I get that extra couple of shots. I use the arc re reactor generator. It increases the base regeneration speed of intrinsic energy. This allows me to regenerate my energy a lot faster. My range, I decrease the intrinsic energy cost for repulsor attacks. Again, allows more efficient repulsor attacks. Now I use laser specialization here simply because the other two are just not as beneficial. For repulsive mastery or for the range mastery, weapon mastery, I use the increased critical attack damage for repulsor attacks by 15%. And in combat, we increase all range attack damage by 15%. We, we make sure we get a takedown spawning a heroic orb, that's also critical. And we increase the damage of all combo finishers by 25%. This will be key for your heavy combo finishers or your light combo finishers. Is this stacking, like I said, working in synchronicity with the gear you already have? Over here, the, the defense, you fill that all the way up, no problem. My ultimate heroic ability, I went in Energy Star, which gives me reduced intrin intrinsic energy cost by 25% for actions or attacks while using Hulkbuster and Hulkbuster Unibeam. Now, other people have different, you know, things that you disruption pulse and, you know, I, I, I totally get that. But this, I just capped for damage. I'm only really using Hulkbuster really for a heal. Because as you know, as you call it out, you get a heal. Your assault heroic, this is my bread and butter right here. My Unibeam. Concentrated fire. Hold the Unibeam on a target. The longer the blast is maintained on a single enemy, the more damage it increases. And precision refractor. This has increased the maximum Unibeam duration by three seconds, allowing for greater damage output. Now, when, some people use the other Unibeam. They use Omega Beam, and I, I'm, I'm a fan of it, it's okay. It's just that you can't maintain that and you can't turn it off. By using this one, I'm allowed to activate my Unibeam and stop holding it whenever I want to you know, stop using it. This allows me, you know, fire control. I get to use all my utilities the way that I want, just like Hulkbuster. When I'm done with it, I hop out. My superhero heroic ability, uh, defensive shield. It's the arc field frequency modifiers reflect projectiles back at the enemy who launched them, right? And then I use arc field. This is an overload, creates a one directional projected bubble that blocks incoming projectiles, but allows range attacks from inside. So this good, works good for solo or team play. I basically make a force shield that not only electrifies everybody, which applies shock damage to them, but it also makes it so I can't get shot. Right? So I sit inside of there and I'm just dumping out damage. 
All right, now we're going to continue to display this build. Thank you for doing this. We're going to go right to the action here. There's no point of trying to do any side missions or anything to display this. I want to show exactly how this works. So we just pick up a few rifts on our way. And as you can see, it drains your health. No matter who you are, no matter how many health points you got, it's going to drain your health. The only time it won't drain your health is when you're in the Hulkbuster armor. So I just fly in a straight path, pick up as many tachyon rifts as I can on the way. And I'm not too worried about the health drain because by the time you get there at this checkpoint, it's going to reset your health anyway. So this is just, you know, travel. And I'm storing up that extra time in my tachyon rift, just stabilizing this so that I have enough time to do what I need to do. There is a special enemy unit close to your location. They may drop and if you fly straight there, you typically won't, you know, lose more than half health. And I know a lot of people like to stop and get all the goodies and everything, but if you're trying to farm stuff, there are definitely better ways to farm things than coming into tachyon rifts. We come here for the gear, let's be honest. There's the new content, it got cosmic gear, and this is why we're here. So I guess this is supposed to be the mini boss they have for the first part of the solo one. This guy with the rocket launcher. And this is on challenge four. So immediately, I go up to all these guys, make sure I get in close as I can, pop my arc reactor overload. As you can see, all my heavy attacks burn through this shield like it's butter. And if I take any damage, you see Kamala will at least hook me up at first. So I don't have to pop my hawk boss armor immediately. And if you're paying attention closely, you see I'm dumping 50k damage in some of these repulsor attacks. Now, that was applying a status effect. You drop your doom fist on anything, boom. You got the electric effect. Look, one shot in these fools. Dumping damage. The thing of true beauty out here. And my Iron Man got them hands. See, a lot of people, they build their Iron Man and he can shoot and it's okay, but he's squishy. You know what I'm saying? He take like two shots and he gone. I could take quite a bit more than that and I could dump hands on you. Again, a unit beam that I can maintain and use and release whenever I'm done with it. Rinse and repeat. Off reload again. Boom. Cooking him. Protecting inside my bubble. Dumping damage. I know, I know a lot of people, that was 100k right there. I know a lot of people thought that uh, uh, repulsors don't really do damage. Repulsors do damage just depending on how you build. All you're doing is looking for colors. Finding somebody who's going yellow or going blue and hit them with the opposite damage. Boom. Health points everywhere or health uh, uh, orbs everywhere. Make sure you stabilize that rift. And this is fairly simple. Soloing it with relative ease. At any time, remember, I could just drop the Hulk or Hulkbuster armor and heal up. So, like I said, there's nothing that's really a threat here. And another reason why I like to bring Thor, I forgot to mention, is because Thor does electric damage. At least my Thor does. He does electric damage. So that is working perfect synergy with what I'm doing. All right, what do we got left here? Is that it? No, something alive around here. Let me go ahead and make sure I stabilize this riff again. And that's one thing you gotta do. You gotta keep your eye on that time. A lot of time you'll fail the, the mission simply because the time runs out. Now there's no great penalty for that. They just restart the, the checkpoint for you without any loss of stars. So it's not really a big deal yet. They might change it, I don't know. But for the most part, it's okay. It's better to make sure you keep your health than worry about keeping the time. Because you will lose a star for your time. I mean, for your help. If you destroy the two transformers on the upper level, the elevator door should open. Go ahead and make sure you take those, those finishes, those takedowns anytime you can. Like I said, that's why we get those heroic orbs. Because this thing charges up. So I got hurt, right? Hawkbuster, baby. Back at 100%. And remember, you take no damage with this. Now, in our other, we're gonna do builds for everybody, all comic builds for everybody. But one thing I would like to remind people of is that 
characters like Cap and Natasha or Black Widow and Captain America, they have a little bit more difficult time in, in something like this simply because they don't have as much sustain. Now you can build them to offset that a little bit, but for the most part, they don't have intrinsic sustain like Hulk, Thor, and obviously Kamala who has her own hills. So I'm done with the Hulkbuster. It has no real benefit for me now. Pull this out. Destroy the core. Okay. As you can see, no real jeopardy. And I have so much armor that nothing's gonna one-shot me or put me in a position where I can't use one of my utilities to get out of it. And that's the problem, like I said. And, and no offense to people who like the glass cannon builds. They, they are amazing. I, I love them. They look great. Just for me and my preference, I like something a little closer to the, the comics because obviously I'm a comic fanboy. Done. Now all we do is do cleanup, and the mission is over. As you can see, I'm always making sure I'm applying those status effects. And always making sure I get those orbs when I can. Now, you know, obviously, <laughs> your heroic isn't really a problem here, but it's good practice to make sure you collect these orbs, because when you're not attacking on Rift, this allows you to keep spamming ultimates. Or heroics, I should say. Which is great. In the second part, we get here, in the second part of this, again, if you're trying to get, you know, materials or, or, or loot boxes or whatever, there are obviously better options than the Tachyon Rip. So we just fly right past that, go right to the door, move on with our lives. And again, as you go to each instance or every loading screen, your health returns, so you don't really care about anything in the interim. Look at these fools. Drop in on them. Pop your shield. Commence the dumping. Now, every attack, I'm holding it out, so I'm using a power attack. They got busy with that one. That's all right. Again, this is why we got the Hulk armor. Hulk Buster rectifies all discrepancies. Go over there and simply just use the melee attack. That's all. Melee is fine because... Anything else would drain your energy. You can, you know, pop it out if you want, but for the most part, I'm just looking to break shields and get them down until I can hit them with what I want to hit them with. So I'll use my Unibeam and hop out the suit, saving a minor bit of energy, and then commence with what I was doing again. This fool don't want to be electrified. It don't matter. He's still going to get it. Our reactors back up. Finish them off. Now, they've improved the AI. They used to always help with the finishes, but they've improved the AI a lot. I was a big complainer about the AI. I was, I thought they were totally useless. Now they're only somewhat useless. And I found that if you just focus on the, the, the Doom bot there, or the Destroyer bot, the big guy, the other ones pretty much fall. Just from your air of effect and, you know, your allies sitting there fighting with you. So I'm just flying around, collecting orbs, tachyon rifts to top off my time and stabilize this rift. So I come out with a full two minutes. When you play solo, you get two minutes and 20 seconds. When you play with the group, you only get one minute. So there's a benefit for playing by yourself. And also when you're playing with, you know, with groups, pickup groups, they may die and reduce your overall score as well. And now we finally move on to the last part. This is the one where you have to control all the points for the hacking so Jarvis can hit the three points so you know he can finish the mission. And as we're traveling here, I forgot to mention the key element of this build that I showed, but I didn't really go too much into. So in my artifacts, my minor artifacts, you see I have Apex Boom, 5.5% increased critical chance for signature attacks. This works in sync with this 18.8 increased damage from signature attacks. So everything is about critting, everything is about signature attacks. And right here, or heavy combos, right? 
And right here, I have 5.5 increased critical chance for heavy combo. So I'm always trying to reinforce the crit, the crit, the crit. And you can take more points and put more points into crit if you want and reduce your repulsor. But th I found this to be the right balance for me, you know, to each their own, obviously. But I wanted to make sure that my hands hurt. When I put them hands on you, you fall. And I want to make sure when I shot you, you died. So I like going up here and taking uh, the top one first. What is it? B? Yeah, I take B first. And then I work my way and take the other two. The computer, for some reason, seems less likely to come up here and mess with this one as opposed to the other two. I don't know why. It just seems to be the case. Same method. Pop it. Oh, he just got smoked. My goodness. That damage, though. So I got one point already. The computer has... Oh, I have two points already. The computer only has one. Look, they just went up there and made a lie out of me and went straight for the other one. Good grief. You know what? Let them have it. Doesn't matter. We'll go take this one because they just let this one go. I'll swing back around and go get that one momentarily. But always remember to keep your eye on your time. Again, it'll fail the mission. It won't cost you a star, but it can be annoying to continuously have to, you know, start the thing over. So I come up here, they left this alone. We're just trading points at this point. I don't care. And your allies have had their AI increase, so they'll defend points a lot better than they used to. They'll actually try. They're not great at it, but at least they try now. Again, pop my shield, commence the cooking. He didn't even get electrified. Don't matter, making sure everything remains stable. Making sure my time is good. Oh, look at this guy. Hands off that thing, boy. Don't touch it. It's hot. Look, I use that and I managed to maintain half of my Unibeam. The other one you just don't get that option with, which is why I prefer this one. Oh, Hawkbuster, my goodness. Yeah, they got real out there. But this is why you walk with 200 armor. So when you get smacked, you're definite, you're guaranteed to survive this. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the mission is complete. Challenge four, difficulty, no problems.